I'm Dr. Edmund Sokowski and welcome to Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed. You know, before we start today's show, I want to make an announcement that I'm pretty excited about. You know, we have the radio show Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed every Saturday morning live on AM 1250 The Answer, also on 92.5 FM. And it pretty much mimics this TV show that we've been doing for 18 and a half years. We have guests that come on, we talk about health, we talk about all the things of life that affect wellness because our wellness is part of our health. And we're really excited, I'm really excited and kind of amazed. You know, we've been doing this particular show now, we're six and a half years, close to seven years of doing this show. And we've now, we're already on also iHeart and TuneIn, but we've now expanded to Rumble starting April 1st, and that's no fool joke. Uh, we're gonna be on Rumble, we're going to be on Spotify, we're going to be on Twitter, and what other place? I can't even think right now what, we're, we're, what, what other venue we're going to be on. So that show is going to be archived, which I'm really excited about because I get requests all the time. Can we go back and listen to the prior shows? And I say, sorry, we can't. I can email those to you, but I can't find, there's no site to go to, but we now have a place to go to. So that's Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed Radio. And again, you can call in on on that show every Saturday morning live from 9 to 10 and actually talk to our guests. But let's get to the wonderful show that we have today and what's really nice is my guests today were on my radio show last weekend and we had an exciting informative show, a lot of information given out and let's welcome today prior guests several times, Mr. Tom Jacobin and his associate Sharnice Wilson. And Tom is founder and owner of West Penn Life and Health. And I'm a client, so I, I need to disclose that. I've been a client for seven years. And his company, and Tom himself, has really done a very good job with my health insurance. Not my health care. He's not part of my health care. That's a different thing, and I think people confuse that. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that, Tom. But health insurance, everything from private insurance to Medicare, Tom can handle out of West Penn Life and Health. So welcome, Tom. Welcome, Sharnice. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's always now, a pleasure. I, I'm always excited. And when you do the radio show, we get so, so much feedback from people because you're giving information that we don't know. Yeah. And insurance is a tricky business. I deal with it every day in my practice. And it, it's so complicated. How, how do you sort through that? So if, if I came, and maybe we could start with Sharnice. Mm -hmm. My... You know, I've been privately funded for my health insurance my whole career. Mm -hmm. So, and, and some people, are of course, working for corporations where they have their, their insurance paid for and, and, and they don't really have to think too much about it. But being that I need private insurance, and that's insurance under people for 65 and under, what do I do? How do, how do I know what I'm getting and whether it's going to benefit me and then I'm going to... I'm going to be able to have coverage if something happens. Right. We, we do get calls. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, the first step is to know that what under 65, um, there's major medical, and then there's an alternative to major medical. Fortunately, we are able to do both from our office. So if you called me, um, I would ask you some questions and, and see which one is going to be a better fit for you. So West Penn Life and Health is a broker, am I right? Correct. Right. So you're able to scan the whole gambit of insurance companies that are out there and find the best fit for your clients. Correct. As Correct. opposed to going to some big one name brand that's only selling their own product. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the biggest benefit for any client is the fact that you can custom fit Absolutely. a policy. Yep, uh, that's correct. I, I look at it when people come into the office, I tell them, you know, uh, this is this is my store, okay, and the products that we put on the shelf are products that that we look at, products that we vet. Usually, uh, insurance companies will court us, meaning, you know, we sell a lot of insurance, right? We're on the radio all over the place. We have an office at 1100 Washington Road with 20,000 cars going by a day, um, and so a lot of companies want us to sell their wares, but you know we check them out and if it's not something that i would buy or sell to my friend or my family then you know i'm not going to put it on the shelf so that's how we look at it it's about relationships both with our vendors 
and relationships with our clients who we hope to have long term. And our and our philosophy in the office is we want happy clients. Okay, happy, well, happy that's clients. Always happy a goal. clients. You know, I just to tell my story. I know when I contacted you and, and met Tom those many years ago, I was paying I don't know roughly fifteen seventeen hundred dollars a month for my health insurance that I really never used. Yeah. You know, and. I'm, I'm sitting. That's that's a mortgage payment, basically. That's right. Not, not today, but it was back then. Yes. And and I, I came to Tom, and I expected uh, um, five minutes to sit down with Tom, and he's yeah, we can give you this, and this is how the benefit is. And I was an hour and a half with Tom, and he went through asking me a series of questions, and came up with a program that saved me a ton of money. I think it was a third I ended up paying mm -hmm. for pretty much the same coverage. Yes. And I actually ended up having to have a surgery, and it worked out perfectly. It did. You know, and, and when I started the radio show, of course, Tom offered to be a sponsor of the radio show. And on the radio show, I only have sponsors that I believe in. And uh, Tom uh, convinced me of that, that this is the person you go to if you need health insurance. I was going to say, a lot of people are just, they, they're unaware of what their options are. So when when they call, um, that's what we do. Get to know the person, see what their needs are, and then pretty much pick out a plan that's gonna fit their needs, their then, budget. Their, you bring them into the office, correct. and you sit down, and I know there were a bunch of, there was a series of questions that I was asked, and from everything, do you, do you travel, you know, do you smoke, do you drink? Uh, do you exercise? It was a whole series right. of questions. What hospitals do you use? What doctors do you use? And why is that important, Shernice? Um, just so we can, w the, the one plan that we offer, it's, it's important, um, it does have an open network, but then there are other plans that are tied to networks. Okay, we have to explain that one. What is an <laughs> open network and what is what do you mean tied to networks? So an open network is where you can use any hospital, any provider um, across the United States. Closed networks are, you have to go to, you know, one specific in one specific chain or branch of hospitals, or use those specific doctors. Meaning, like you're either going to a UPMC affiliated hospital or an AGH. Correct. Uh, I don't think they call it AGH anymore. What do they call it? Allegheny Health, Health Network, system, or, Network or, yeah. Systems or something. Uh, that's actually my choice of places to go to. They saved my life. Uh, 27 years ago, so I, I, I'm fond of them. But uh, that's important because if you travel a lot, that system might not work for you. Correct. Absolutely. And it, But if you're a homebody, it's a perfect system. Because everything you need is around here. So do you, if I have a particular physician that I see, do I have to check and make sure that physician's in my network? Depending on what plan you have, you, you, you might have to. If you have a managed care plan, then yes, it's going to be important that you check to see are your providers in that plan. If if there are providers, if you're going with a managed care plan and there are providers that you want to see, um, we would try to make sure that we get you a plan that those providers are in. So a managed care plan is what used to be termed HMO and things like that. Is that the same thing HMOs, we're, we're talking about? Yeah. And, and PPO? or preferred provider organizations. So what's the difference between HMO and PPO? So HMOs, you're definitely going to be tied to that network. A PPO normally gives you access. Like you can go out of network, but you'll pay a little bit more than if you were staying in the network. OK, so let's say I'm on that HMO or that PPO, and I'm a homebody, but some for some reason I you know, went to Los Angeles, and I fell and broke my leg. What happens? Typically, emergency services are covered with whatever medical plan you have. Um, but if you ended up being hospitalized and you were out of your network, that could potentially present problems financially mm. because you're hospitalized and you're not in the network. So, so that, that, that is really a big consideration. You really have to sit down and think about what your lifestyle is. Absolutely. Correct. Wow. And this is important depending on how old you are? How old you are, um, especially with, with Medicare. Um, when you get into Medicare, 
You can have original Medicare, which that gives you freedom to use any doctor, um, any hospital across the United States as long as they accept Medicare. Um, if you're over 65 and you get a Medicare Advantage plan, the majority of those are connected to networks. So like eight, the HMO, you get into HMOs again. I think talking about Medicare is really important because we have an aging population, of course. But I think we need to finish something up on the, the previous conversation before we move on. So if I'm 30 years old and very active and I'm paying for my own health care, I have to be then careful what insurance policy I have because I'm more inclined to travel. If you have a major medical plan, we do offer an alternative to major medical and that gives you freedom of choice. Explain that one for us. The freedom of choice that yeah. allows you again to use any doctor, any hospital nationwide. Does that mean a higher premium? Not necessarily. These plans are, are medically underwritten. So the, the cost of the plans go based on age and you know your, your health status. You could be rated up a little bit, but um, Typically, they're lower priced than major medical plans. Uh, so who, who would be a good candidate for something like that? If you're, I would say, anywhere from 18 to 63, and you're fairly healthy, and you're active, and, and freedom of choice is important to you, you're a good candidate. So Tom, when you had you have a good organization that you work with, and I think that's what we did for me with the when we tailored my plan initially. Can you explain what that was about and how that works? Sure. Uh, well, very very much like what Sharnice is talking uh, about is that you know with a lot of health insurance, people tend to gravitate to the big names, right? You know, uh, the big box companies. That's what they know, right? Um, why? Because those companies tend to spend the most money on advertising, whatever. Doesn't mean they're the best, it just means uh, th 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 they're the best known. We, we write business in some cases, and, and we do represent all the big carriers in Pittsburgh, by the way. We also represent some boutique carriers that nobody's ever heard of um, because they offer a unique value proposition. That is the, the freedom of choice plan is what we hooked you up with years ago. Why? Because I ask you a lot of questions about your lifestyle, how often you see the doctor, um, are you in relatively good health, what are you looking for in terms of managing risk, and we put you with a hospital surgical plan on an indemnity chassis and then wrapped it around with a catastrophic alternative for, like you said, a savings of 50% or maybe a little more than than that over what you were paying. That plan gave you the ability to pick any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in America, and still enjoy good risk management, which is what insurance is, right? Um, meaning if something happens, there's enough money to keep you out of the weeds financially, whether it's a hospital stay, surgery, office visits, testing, therapy, whatever. So you and I always have this conversation there's a difference between health care and health insurance, and people Absolutely. confuse them. Would you explain the difference? Yeah, well, health care. What is health care? Health care is, <coughs> health care is drinking a glass of water rather than a can of Coke. Health care is eating the apple instead of the Snickers bar. Health care is walking. Health care is managing your weight. Health care is eating fresh foods. Things that, that we do. Making the proper choices. The choices. And then the next level of healthcare, in my opinion, one of the most important things that a consumer can do for themselves is a great relationship with a primary care physician. Um, I advocate for, I believe in free market medicine. I use what is called a direct primary care physician who doesn't even take insurance. I pay a monthly subscription and my you can, doctor You could mention Dr. Plute. Dr. She's been Rebecca on the show, Plute. She's been on the radio yeah, show. She's the best. She's, she is. And there are many doctors like Dr. Plute. And I see Dr. Plute as well. Yeah, and, and that's something else that we often do is, is we advocate for, you know, out-of-the-box thinking, meaning what? Meaning there's a lot of different ways 
to care for your health and manage your risk. So health care is you making the right decisions, the right choices, and then having the backup of medical providers in case something happens or to monitor your progress. Bingo. Health insurance is for when something happens. If you have an accident, it, you fall and break a leg, you have a heart attack, you have a stroke, you develop cancer for some reason. That's right. These things that happen, that's, that's where health insurance comes into play. Bingo. You know, I often look at it like your spare tire, right? Um, I have a spare tire in my car, right in the trunk. My goal is not to use it. I mean, I, you know, right? I don't, I don't want a flat tire. I don't want to dig that, t that spare tire out. You know, my goal is to make it to whatever age and, and not really cash in on my insurance. Not everybody believes that. There are some people that buy insurance plans and very often the big expensive insurance plans, they're so costly that people then start thinking like, I need to get something out of this because it, it's costing me so much. I have exactly the opposite philosophy. I want to pay as little as possible for my insurance um, and I want to put as much time and energy as I can in staying healthy. Good foods, vitamins, you know, exercise. Insurance is just to keep you out of the weeds. God forbid if, if a serious ailment or injury happens that you cannot write a check for. That's how I look at it. And, and what is catastrophic care? Catastrophic care would be, um, you know, heart, insurance. stroke, cancer. Uh, one of my agents in Ohio's mother, unfortunately, was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. Very, very That's a tough dread one. disease and a very yeah. costly disease, okay? Yeah. Those are catastrophic issues. But, but I must tell you, most individuals under age 65, the statistics are they do not have major or catastrophic loss. The average person isn't dealing with big stuff on an annual basis. They're dealing with a few office visits, maybe some testing therapy, preventive care, gallbladder surgery. That's more basic hospital. Catastrophic is when things get, you know, big. Stroke, heart cancer, Lou Gehrig's disease. It, it kind of require, may require long-term care. Yes, yeah. or, or a five or 10 day stay in the hospital, which can be very costly, right? Yeah. Surgery, multiple yeah. surgeries. Now, you know, when I had both of my surgeries I've had in the last maybe seven years, they be out of the hospital right away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which may be a good thing. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you need that coverage in case some of these things happen. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But the primary concern is you doing the right things. Yes. And, and we use that term on health and wellness empowering yourself yes. and you do that through knowledge and this is why we do shows like this because health insurance is scary you don't know i you know i've learned so much because i'm more involved with it yes. through you through Shanice mm -hmm. um and jackie yeah but uh i get questions from people that i can actually answer now that i couldn't before because of that reason most people are clueless. Yeah. And even, you know, I'll see patients come in the office and I don't know anything about that front stuff at the office. You know, I, I don't know, there's so many insurance companies and so, so many regulations and everybody's plan's different and certain insurance covers this, certain doesn't, you know, it's, it's a, almost a game, a puzzle that, that the front desk people in my office have to put together. Yeah. And, but I hear things, you know, and nobody knows what their coverage is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's very, to many people, it's a very boring subject. I mean, let's face it, uh, you know, the average person who buys an insurance policy, uh, when they get their actual contract from the insurance company, rarely are they going to sit down with their spouse or best friend at the end of the day and go, hey, let's read all 126 pages <laughs> of this contract, you know. Um, but it's important. It, it really is. And, and it is unfortunate that health insurance has become as complex as it is. Uh, I don't think it has to be that way and that's one of the things that we stress is keeping it simple, um, explaining things, educating the consumer. That's our number one goal by the way is we educate the consumer and I must tell you not everybody wants that. Some people are like you know they're looking at their watch wanting to get out of there. That's probably not our customer okay yeah. because they're the people that in a year or two when they have a claim are going to complain I didn't know this or that. I'd rather let, let's, let's front load the conversation 
up front, meaning let's educate, let's look at the big print. My, my father was an engineer, okay? And, uh, uh, so that and means a detailed person. Detailed person. <laughs> and one of the things he would often say is, remember this, son, the big print giveth and the small print taketh away. So pay attention to both. We like to do that with people. We want them to know which way the parade's going so that at claim time, there's no surprises. And, that, and that's exactly what you do. Yep. Because I, as I said before, when I met with you, I thought I'd be there 10 minutes and sign a few papers and walk away, and I was there an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. What's a copay? A copay is an amount, uh, if you go to the doctor, it's the amount that you pay your doctor. So you have insurance coverage for a portion of the procedures, but then you have an upfront cost that you have to, you have to pay. Correct, with, with major medical plans. And that varies. It does vary plan. from from plan to plan, company to company. It it varies. So that's actually a factor that you may want to look at, especially if you're using hospitals or or medical facilities a lot. Correct. Um, some people you can pay twenty dollars every time you go to a doctor. You can have a set four hundred dollar copay if you have an MRI. Um, again, they vary insurance company to insurance company, but those are, are amounts that you pay that add up over the year towards whatever your maximum amount of pocket cost is. Okay. Um, so those are co-pays, and then there are co-insurance, and that's an amount, um, normally a percentage amount. So it's not a set dollar amount, it's a percentage amount. So you could have both a co-insurance and a co-pay? Correct. So your insurance company is going to cover a certain point. You have a percentage of that that you have to cover as well, plus your copay. Correct. Well, see, that's when that your your visit could become expensive. And there are also deductibles, and some plans. Well, what's are a deductible? <laughs> a, a deductible is the amount that you pay before your insurance company starts paying. Um, and so there are some services that are subject. So you pay your monthly premium, and then you might have. Um, a, a one thousand dollar deductible. So before your insurance ever kicks in. Correct. Outside of preventative care. Oh boy! See, you, <laughs> you, you see why you got to go talk to these people because this is really complicated. And, and Sharnice is going to be leaving us. Uh, she's not going to be here for the second half of the show. So I want Sharnice to talk about her new specialty at, at West Penn Life and Health, and that's Medicare. So I kind of wanted to talk about something else first, but we're running out of time, Sharnice. Medicare kicks in when? Typically when you turn 65. Um, if you are disabled, you could potentially get it before 65, and if you have um, a couple other major diseases, you typically can qualify for Medicare. And Medicare is medical insurance? Correct. And does it have all of those deductibles and, and co-pays and all this stuff? It can. There are, there's original Medicare, um, and then there are Medicare Advantage plans. The Medicare Advantage plans can have, some of them can have deductibles. You do have co-pays, um, they can have co-insurance, and then original Medicare. Um, if you stay in original Medicare, then you have to add prescription drug coverage. The Advantage plans tend to come with prescription drug coverage. Also, if you stay in original Medicare, um, that normally picks up 80% of the cost. You do have the option to get a supplement to cover the other 20%. So there are really a lot of options. And, and from what I've gathered, there's Medicare A, B, C, D, the alphabet soup of Medicare. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you know what to do? You come talk to us. You come talk to us. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Yeah. That's what to do. <laughs> and so, so you're there to talk about it. Janice is there to talk about it, and and Tom yeah. even pitches in with with Absolutely. Medicare, and, and it is complicated. It, so original Medicare, what's the biggest difference between original Medicare and this Advantage Medicare? I would say the biggest difference again goes back to freedom of choice. Um, with original Medicare, you can see any provider that accepts Medicare um, across you, the country. Across the country, and if if you stay with original Medicare, then you have to get prescription drug coverage, which is separate. Um, and then typically they- Separate meaning you pay an additional amount of money. Correct. 
It's a separate yeah. policy, and you pay a, a monthly premium for that prescription drug coverage. But if you stay in original Medicare, then you have to have it. If you don't, then you face a penalty for every month that you could have had it, but you didn't have it. Oh, boy. <laughs> what a headache. How, how does anybody do this on their own? I, I don't know. And one thing I like is that people do come in and, and they're confused. And when you turn 65, you start getting a lot of phone calls, a, lo a lot of m information in the mail. You see commercials, call this number. Uh, my advice is we are local, we're friendly, and w we, we test for this every year. We take a test to certify to sell these products well, that we... The nice thing is you're local, but you're also in what, 35 states? Yes, so we do with technology now. Uh, for example, you know, the meeting that Shernice has coming up, it's, it's for life insurance, which she's becoming very good at that, I might add. But now we have the ability to get on these Zoom calls, right? I mean, we can send a link to somebody in Oklahoma City and literally do a presentation, send a quote, enroll them over the phone online as if they were in our office now. It's amazing using technology. So we do. We're advancing quickly into high tech but I still embrace high touch, which is relationships. Well, I think you are about personal touch, Tom. Yeah. Um, you're a very personal man. Shernice, we're almost out of the segment time here, but what's the difference between, the biggest difference between this, this uh, original and advantage? Okay, so the original, again, gives you freedom of choice. The Advantage plans, um, some of them can be a $0 premium, so premium is a factor. Also, they're, again, tied to networks. Because there's different degrees of this Advantage. Correct. So if you were a traveler, is an Advantage a good thing for you? If you travel occasionally, I mean, it, it, it could be if you don't plan on seeking routine care while you're while you're traveling and again if you have some kind of emergency situation it it's going to be covered okay even if you're hospitalized correct okay so how do people get a hold of Shernice Wilson you can give me a call at our office um, our phone number is 724-228-7187 um, our website is also westpenlife.com we have that information up on the screen from time to time and you'll set up You'll talk to everybody on the phone and then set up an appointment to come in and, and correct and and if you if you are local you're welcome to to stop in yeah you're always there most of the time yeah <laughs> yeah well you know we're at the end of this first segment here we're, we're, what a fast 30 minutes it goes so fast and you know so i, I appreciate you coming on uh, you're gonna go to your appointment and we're gonna have you back you All know right. we're, we'll Thanks for having me on. There's so much information and there's so little time to get it out. But we're giving you highlights. You need it for the details to get a hold of, of Shernice. What was that? I, I was saying that people need to, to hear the details. They need to get a hold of you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If, if you have more questions, additional questions, give me a call and I'll gladly answer your questions. All right. We're going to go to break and we come back. We're going to focus with Mr. Tom Yakupin and really rack his brain on some, with some questions here today. We'll be back on Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed. Welcome back to Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed. I'm Dr. Edmund Sukowski, and we're here with Mr. Tom Yakupin from West Penn Life and Health. Tom, Sharnice had to leave, mm -hmm. and we were talking about Medicare. Yes, we were. So, Medicare is important because there's a period of time you have to sign up for it, correct? Yes. But you have a window of time that, that you have to sign up or you get penalized. Could you explain that to us? Well, <clears throat> yeah, so Medicare typically, and as Shernice said in the previous segment, there are some exceptions, right, with uh, uh, health issues, but typically people age into Medicare at their 65th birthday, right? They turn 65. 
And the window of opportunity is three months prior to turning 65 and three months following your 65th birthday. So you have a six month window that is, you know, open enrollment, right? Where there's no bad things can happen. You can make whatever choices you need to make. You can get, you know, all, all your egg, uh, your ducks in a row and make, make your decisions during that six month period of time. Um, if you do not do that and, and you don't have a qualifying reason to not do that, you can suffer a penalty both with part B as in boy or part D which is the prescription drug plan. And that means higher premiums? Yeah. Yeah, when you which will last yeah, your lifetime. Correct. So that that could really add up. Yeah, it can add up. It, it it's it's a small amount, but over time, you know, why pay up. it, right? Yeah. And and 60 uh 6 months is a long time to to figure out what you want to do. So well, yeah. there are procrastinators. There out are there. Pro yeah. You know, so so can you just give us an overview of what Medicare A is, then Medicare B, C, D, E, and is there an F? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So original Medicare uh, really had two parts to begin with. A was hospital. So meaning that if you were hospitalized, you had insurance coverage. Bingo. Yeah, and, and if you think about it, that is where, th you know, the biggest medical bills can occur, right, is hospitalization. And, uh, and back in the day when Medicare was launched originally, um, that was something that, you know, the architects of the plan said, we really have to protect our, our aging population against the risks that can cost them the most money, i.e. hospital. So uh, you fund Medicare Part A through your working lifetime, typically through payroll taxes, okay? So that's paid for. So when you age into Medicare at 65, Part A is bought and paid for. It's covered. You it, don't have any premium yeah. for it. You're, you're just going to wind up with that card in the mail. You're just going to get this card and go, oh, wow, I, have, I, I'm, I now qualify for Medicare. You have Part A. A choice consumers are going to have to make is Part B, as in boy, right? What is that? That's outpatient coverage. Meaning seeing your physician going to your dentist, th those things? Not your dentist. No. Um, uh, outpatient medical would include your physician, testing therapy, same day surgery, you know, in an outpatient ward of a hospital or maybe a freestanding uh, surgery center. So, um, you know, x-rays, CAT scans, lab tests, things of that nature. So that's more uh, outpatient. Your teeth would be covered, so an injury or an accident to sound natural teeth would be covered, okay? But routine dental care is actually not covered by Medicare, okay? So typically a consumer might look at adding a dental plan um, uh, to that. And that's another option. It's that another option. But, uh, but the, the, the structure of original Medicare is, was, was A, hospital, and then B for your outpatient. Um, and then at or around 2003, they launched the Medicare Advantage, which is Medicare Part C. And then they launched the drug plans that are now available for consumers, which is Medicare Part D. So um, when people turn 65, they're gonna get a red, white, and blue book from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services uh, called, I think it's called Me and Medicare or You and Medicare. Um, they're going to get bombarded with all kind of literature from everybody under the sun. But that is, that book from Centers for Medicare, Medicaid Services is very educational, but it's very thick. And most people, unfortunately, are, aren't going to read it. But it will go through these four parts, A, B, C, and D. And that's really it as it relates to Medicare. And what's the D part? D is the drugs. The drugs. That is your prescription so drug. So that's plan. a formulary that, of drugs that they'll pay for? Is that what? Um, it is. is. Actually, the Medicare Part D program uh, is where a consumer enrolls in a drug plan that is underwritten and administered by a private insurance company. For example, uh, Aetna has one uh, called Silver Scripts. Blue Cross Blue Shield has one. These are Part D. These are drug plans 
that are administered by a private insurance company who has a contract with the federal government. And, and every formulary can vary a little bit, every drug plan can vary a little bit, but they're, they're, they're also rather standardized. One, one of the things that you, you will see um, you know, with Medicare Advantage plans, Part C, and drug plans, is if, if an insurance company wants to get into the Medicare business, they are held really accountable by the federal government, the Centers for Medicare, Medicaid Services, CMS. They hold them very accountable, um, and, and there are actuarial limits that they have to, to meet, uh, litmus tests, they have to they have to at least pay X number of dollars, you know? So a lot of times people will ask me, well, I heard this plan's good and that plan's bad. And, you know, uh, you know what I, I usually say to them is they all meet a federal standard. There's really no bad plan, to be frank with you, in Medicare. It's it really one that isn't. works for you. It's one that works for you. They differ. And that's why it's important to talk to someone that has that knowledge because you can't make those decisions for yeah. yourself. You, you don't you, have enough knowledge correct. to do it. A one-size-fits-all fit, approach does not work in mm -hmm. most insurance. It definitely does not work in health care insurance plans. No. Now, I, I see a lot of patients that are up in age and they have these Advantage plans. It happens, Ed. It does happen, <laughs> and you want it to happen. Yeah. But, but um, what I see as far as insurance comes when they come into our office, a lot of them are on these Advantage plans, and mm -hmm. they have wonderful dental coverage. Yes, they do. Yeah, um, and let's talk about that for a minute. So, and, and Shernice did a wonderful job. Very proud of her, by the way. You know, she was in uh, television. She was a, an editor for two large news stations back in the day and over the last five years has become a very competent insurance agent. Oh, uh, she has a wonderful personality. Tons you know, of everybody character. Everybody loves talking Integrity, to yeah. yeah. All, all the right stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but she had mentioned, you know, you had asked the question, difference between original Medicare and Medicare Advantage, and she correctly answered that original Medicare gives you freedom of choice. It also probably has the lowest out-of-pocket, okay? So then a fair question is, what is the advantage to a Medicare Advantage plan. And the advantage is, is what these private insurance companies do um, is they, they have to, actuarially, they have to cover everything original Medicare covers, A and B, but they can do more, hence the name Advantage. So they kind of bake everything in the loaf, you know what I mean? It's all in the recipe. Um, instead of an original Medicare card and then maybe a dental insurance card and then a prescription drug card and then a Medicare supplement card, which is a, a way of doing things in original Medicare, you can hop into a Medicare Advantage plan that very often, they don't all have it, but most of them do, they have everything baked in the loaf. So you've got A, B, you've got your drug card, you've got dental, you've got uh, prescription drug uh, or uh, eyeglass coverage for frames and lenses. Um, they even throw some goodies in, um, I like to call them hippie benefits, but um, they throw goodies in like a gym membership, you know, it's called uh, silver sneakers, some companies brand it as. And, and that's a good idea because going back to what healthcare is, right? Healthcare is not insurance, and insurance is not healthcare. Um, as you age, mobility is very, very important. Yeah. So, part of their strategy is they give a free gym membership to their clients to promote uh, mobility, health, and, health. And, and wellness, right? Yeah. Some right. of the other things that these companies are doing now, one of my favorite Medicare Advantage plans is they even give a, you get a visa card and they load dollars every quarter onto this visa card to where you can pay for over-the-counter medications. And, and it's funded through your membership in that Medicare Advantage plan. So with a good Medicare Advantage plan, you've got coverage for Part A hospital, you've got your coverage for Part B outpatient, you've got your drug plan, You've got dental, you've got uh, help with uh, prescription lenses and frames. You've got your membership at Planet Fitness or the Wellness Center. You have a, a Visa card to where when you're buying your calcium tablets or your ibuprofen over the counter, 
you might be able to fund all of that with this Visa card. So they do really have some tremendous advantages. And you pay a little extra for that. No, I, actually know? in some cases, in th this is the interesting thing. Um, there are good Medicare Advantage plans that are zero premium, no money. If you're enrolled in A and B, and you have to be enrolled in B, and by the way, there's a cost for, for Part B. You're going to pay that to the federal government. Typically, they're going to deduct that out of your Social, Social Security, Security check. Um, but as long as you're in A and B, uh, you qualify for a Medicare Advantage plan. And some of these Medicare Advantage plans uh, are zero premium, which begs a, a fair question. A lot of consumers, especially old school consumers, are like, well, you know, you get what you pay for. How can a zero premium health plan be any good at all? Well, what, what consumers don't know is when, when somebody enrolls in a Medicare Advantage plan, Dr. Ed, technically they're leaving original Medicare. And now all the, the work and the responsibility and the administration of claims and everything is now on that private insurance company, okay? Um, and that private insurance company now receives money every month from the federal government on your behalf as a Medicare eligible client. And let's just say that number, and I'm, I'm using it arbitrarily because it, it's changed over the years, but let's say that number is $875 a month, okay? So behind the scenes, without the consumer really knowing it, the Medicare Advantage plan, who has a contract with the federal government, is receiving $875 a month to fund this, this plan. Um, and so they'll roll out zero premium plans because that money is enough to, to cover those benefits. See, that's why you listen to this show, and that's why you go to talk to people like Tom. Yes, it's true, because yeah. it is counterintuitive. I must yeah. tell you that when I went to my first Medicare Advantage plan class, and you have to certify every year for these, you know, Jakobin, why? Usually I'm sitting in the back of the class, right? But when the guy's teaching us about the product and then says, oh, by the way, the premium for this is zero, my hand immediately goes up and it's like, what? You know, how does that work? How, how can it, you know, how can you, you know? But that's how the mechanism works. They're being funded uh, with federal subsidies, okay? And then there are Medicare Advantage plans that are tiered. They're, you know, like anything, good, better, best, right? Um, there are some Medicare Advantage plans that might ask the consumer to contribute. Uh, you know, 70, 48 bucks a month, 70 bucks a month, 200 bucks a month, whatever. And that's usually for better formularies or lower co-pays or other things, uh, some other, other goodies. But that, that's how it works, you know? Yeah, I, in, yesterday, in fact, you know, I'm always in one of the operatory seeing patients, but I was up front signing a, a prescription and, and our, one of my, our patients was saying, I guess they were on Advantage Gold. Yes. And they said they just upped the dental from two thousand last year to three thousand this year. And Fantastic! You know, they're all excited because they have better coverage. Yeah, yeah, it, it is true. And, and Medicare Advantage plans can work very well. You know, the the thing that that we say to consumers when they call us or come into the office is um, uh, we ask a lot of questions. And, and in the first decision that I want to help people make or discover is what is the best route for you? Where do you want to get your Medicare benefits? Is it going to be better for you to stay in original Medicare and we build a strategy for you? Or can a Medicare Advantage plan serve you better? And frankly, we don't care because we're compensated by the carriers either way. What we want is we want a happy client with the product that fits their needs, their lifestyle, their budget, etc. Um, and, and it's interesting because if you do the front work, uh, meaning again, like we discussed in the first segment, their prescription drugs, their doctors, their hospitals, do they travel? Where are they going to seek care in their retirement? Are they going to live here full time? Or do they have a house here and a home in Arizona or Vero Beach, Florida, or, you know, wh whatever. Those, those, all, those factors. So Tom not hit my sweet spot here. So most people here have houses in Florida. So half the year there, part of the yes. year here. You know. So how does Medicare Im impact that? Well, I mean, the fact that, that they live here s some of the year and, and, and somewhere else some of, of the year is going to impact them because inevitably as we age, there's going to be a, a, a greater need for routine care, right? For, for medical care. So, um, so you want a plan that is gonna serve you here 
and you want a plan that is going to serve you there. Some of our local carriers, right, uh, are, are regional carriers. They're not going to have a network of doctors in Vero Beach uh, that you're going to want to see, right? So, so those are factors that, that we take into consideration when we make recommendations. Uh, where are you going to be living? Where are you going to be seeking care? How often do you seek care? All, all of these things play into the deal. Yeah, but if it's done right, you know, Medicare Advantage plans are great. They work very well. Original Medicare is great. It works really well. It's just a matter of, of what works best for you. So if you're on an Advantage plan that's like a PPO, is that what? Yeah, Preferred Provider Organization. Okay, PPO. so, and you're, you're out, of, out of state mm -hmm. and something happens, you have that emergency coverage. Yeah, you have e emergency coverage with an HMO or PPO. And do you have hospitalization if you have to be admitted? Um, in, in many cases, if it's emergent, yes. But where a PPO can be very helpful is PPO plans allow you to access care from a provider that is in network. They also allow you to access care from a provider that is out of network with a slight penalty. So that might be an option that we recommend for somebody that's living here and somewhere else. Meaning a little more out of pocket. Uh, slightly higher copay or coinsurance, but still covered. Still covered. Whereas with an HMO, it, it, w it would be a very true statement to say that with a health maintenance organization, an HMO plan, you seek care in their network. Um, if you go out of network, you're not covered. That's pretty, you know, with one exception, and that is emergent care. And even that you've got to kind of watch because who's deciding if it's an emergency or not? Usually the insurance company, you know. So, yeah, you know, insurance dictates a lot of medical care. They do. And, you know, even like bizarre things, you know, for example, I do a lot of gum treatments. Mm -hmm. And so someone comes in with gingivitis or periodontitis, gum disease, and, um, they have you know, bad buildup on their teeth, colonies of bacteria and so forth, and we have to do a debridement. Well, the next step in that procedure to cure that disease is to do what we call a deep cleaning. It's a subscale root planning. Well, you cannot do a debridement and then go right immediately and do the subscale, which is the best thing you can do for a patient because you have some patients that are on pre-medications and you know some people that are on blood thinners and it's it's right. really involved but the insurance company dictates the procedure so if we do a debridement and go in to do the subskill they will not pay for the subskill wow. but if we bring them back the next day they'll pay for it only if we do half the mouth and sometimes you can do a full mouth in a full day in one day well then you have to bring them back a third Thursday, time yeah. And, and so it's never the best interest of the patient, in my opinion. I'm giving my professional opinion mm -hmm. here. It's the best interest of the insurance company. And I guess it's holding off to the holding on to the money longer that they have to pay out. I don't know. I don't know. Or is it is it? Uh, um, I, I don't I don't know what the reasoning is behind it. But it's not always to the benefit of the patient because if you have somebody that's on a premed, that's three days that they're on a premed. Yeah. You know, well, we, three we days talked off their blood thinner. We talked about Dr. Plute the other, or yeah, in, in the, the previous, first segment. And, and one of the things that she mentioned to me uh, in our discussion, you know, about free market medicine versus the very corporate model we have today with managed care. And, and, and that is, you know, as she said, Tom, I went to school to become a doctor to treat patients based on my professional knowledge, right? And, and what's happening to a lot of primary care physicians is they, they are actually working for the insurance companies. The insurance companies, or in many cases the government, is calling the shot on how they do things. And a lot of doctors don't like that. And I must tell you, I don't particularly like that either. No. You know? and, I, and, I, and I hear that all the time. And, and they're referring patients to seeing nurse practitioners. And the nurse practitioners aren't ordering things because they're under directives not to because of the insurance companies. And, and, you know, I think nurse practitioners are wonderful. Uh, they're not physicians, by the way. Bingo, yeah. But um, I love Dr. Plute. You know, I, I, I'm a patient. She's a patient of mine. Yeah. I, I see her probably every week because I'm in and out of Jeffrey's Drugstore every week. 
uh, buying supplements because Jeffrey's Drugstore mm -hmm. has a wonderful yeah, amount do. of supplements. And I work a lot with Jeffrey, with uh, with Jerry O'Hara, with with my patients. Um, and uh, I was telling Dr. Plute about my great nephew, and she got so upset for the treatment that this three-year-old oh. kid was getting. Yeah. And you, you just see the fire in her yeah. uh, about the mismanagement of medical care. Oh man, again, I can't say it enough that uh, a good primary care physician, much like a good dentist, right? Because um, your oral health will affect your overall oh, health. Oh, it as absolutely well. does. But a good primary care, care physician is one of the best assets you can have to mitigate risk and to maintain quality health long, long into your future. Uh -huh. um, you know, and, and again, all managed care is not bad, but the trend of managed care, the trend of insurance companies uh, calling shots, like, you know, one of the things that I think most people have seen over the last 20 or 30 years is, um, you know, if you go into the hospital, it's, it's very rare that you're in the hospital any length of time today. Why? Because you would think if you're a hospital, you'd want a lot of people coming and staying, right? Because they get paid per day you're in. Why wouldn't they want you to stay there? Well, I'll tell you why the insurance companies are like, they're, they're, they're counting the, they're the hours, yeah. man. Um, you know, so some of that's a little skeevy in my opinion, because, you know, again, when, when the people that are profiting from the uh, condition or the sickness or the disease are also the people uh, controlling, you know, some of the behavior of the providers. I think that you, you have to really watch that motive. You know, is this really in the best interest of the consumer for their health? Or is this in the best interest? Is this decision in the best interest of the bottom line of that insurance company? But, you know. What prompted you to find, found West Penn Life and Health? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, we laugh because uh, I would have never considered, I never saw myself getting into the insurance business, you know, as you know, uh, I, I, I wanted to be a rock star, right? <laughs> and, uh, but I got married, had a baby on the way, and I, I needed to find a career. Um, and I answered an ad in New England, it was a blind ad, executive sales, uh, and I went to work for MetLife, Metropolitan Insurance Company, and I was captive, okay? Captive means I was an employee of that company, and, you know, great company, but all I, you know, all I knew, all I learned, and all I had to sell was MetLife. And, and, you know, you get out into the field and you realize, we have some good stuff, but there's some things we cannot address. Uh, and there are some products that I bumped into that I thought, well, that product's actually better than the product I'm selling, but I'm an employee of MetLife, so, you know. So eventually, you know, I grew up and I thought being a broker is a better idea. Okay. And I moved moved around a good bit. Because you're able to offer, Bingo. again, the tailor to, the, to your client. Yeah. So West Penn, the name West Penn Life and Health, you offer other services besides health insurance, yeah. Medicare, and so forth, uh, life insurance, Yes. So, so why, do, why do I need life insurance? Sure. Uh, you need life insurance. The most succinct answer to that question is you do not l need life insurance because you're going to die, although we all are. You need life insurance because the people that you love are going to live when you're gone. Um, you know, so imagine me as a young man with four children, uh, the breadwinner of the home. What if something would have happened that, that took me out early, okay? Uh, you know, with a wife and four children at home. Who, who's going to shoulder that responsibility? Well, that's where, you know, a life insurance policy steps in. And while you cannot replace the loved one, a half a million dollars or a million dollars or whatever that insurance policy is for, that money can pay off the house, raise the children, put them through college. I call life insurance love insurance, okay? Why? Because, um, it, it, you know, it's about love, man. I mean, as, as, as kooky as that sounds, it is taking a little bit of money each month today, and it is putting an insurance contract on my life so that if I am taken out of the scene prematurely, the people that I love, the things that I'm responsible for are taken care of. Business owners, we do life insurance for key executives, we, uh, for people that have a lot of money. We, we do life insurance to help them keep their estate when they die 
and pass it on to their kids so the government doesn't take half of it. You know, you can do, you, life insurance can be used for tax planning, estate planning, uh, buy-sell agreements, to fund funeral, burial, and final expenses, all of these things. But, but life insurance is the one policy that you're going to use, okay? You may never, your house may never burn down. You may never total your car, um, but we're all going to die, okay? And so, you know, th th that's what life insurance does. Is there burial insurance? Yeah, there's burial insurance, yeah. Again, we're running out of time. Sure. You also do something with annuities. Annuities, yeah, fantastic. Especially now with the bank shakeup and a very volatile stock market. We deal with what we call safe money annuities. And, um, you know, that's a, a, a product where you can park money with an insurance company and receive a competitive interest rate, much like at a bank, but we're not a bank. But right now, for example, we have a five-year annuity paying 5.57% on your money. You could put $100,000 in that and earn $5,575 every year guaranteed, right? Um, without the worry of, is my bank gonna fail? Uh, so we use those for 401k rollovers, we use those as alternatives to bank CDs, which are underperforming. Uh, we can set people up with IRAs to accumulate money for their retirement. Uh, we can set up self-employed people with uh, SEP, Simplified Employee Pension Programs. And we use annuities because they're safe, they're transparent, and they're predictable, okay? Um, you, you know, annuities only go up. My annuities, safe money annuities, only go up. They're fixed interest. I stay away from equity-based products. So they're very safe uh, and they're a great way to accumulate wealth. Safely, without, they never go down, you don't Bingo. lose. We got a minute left, Tom. How do people get a hold of Tom Yalkin <coughs> at West Penn Life? And Health? Yeah, certainly. I, I would say visit us on the web, westpenlife.com. Visit our office at 1100 Washington Road. Washington, Pennsylvania, just up on the hill from the Meadows Racetrack, or give us a call, 724-228-7187. By the way, we're having a retirement seminar April 15th at Napoli's. If anybody wants to come, there is a free lunch in life, and it'll be April 15th at Napoli's. If you're within three months of 65 uh, or you're retiring soon, we invite you to come and learn more. Learn the specifics about what we do with life, health, Medicare, and annuities. Yeah, and have some fun in, in, in a soup and a sandwich to, at boot. Hey, Tom, thanks so much for coming Thank on. You. Remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet. When you're healthy, you're happy as well. God bless. Remember, every Saturday morning live, 9 o'clock, AM 1250, The Answer, Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed Radio. Bye-bye.